Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sangeeta Chaudhary and again I welcome you all to my lecture class. In my today's ECG lecture class, I am going to talk about AV and RT. Now let's see what is AV and RT. AV and RT stands for Atrioventricular Nodal Reentrant Tachycardia. Okay, and this is one of the subtype of SVT. SVT stands for supraventricular tachycardia. Now, uh, by supraventricular tachycardia means tachycardia which is originating from uh, above the level of ventricles. SVT has one more subtype that is AVRT. AVRT stands for atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. In my next class, I am going to talk about AVRT, but in this class, let's see what is AVNRT. AVNRT is, of course, a medical emergency. We should be very much able to diagnose AVNRT from the clinical features and very much from the ECG so that we can successfully treat our patient. Let's see what is happening at the level of AV node normally. Normally, when uh, impulse originates from the SA node in the atria, it will travel towards the AV node. And once it reaches the AV node, it will have two ways to go. One is the fast pathway. This is the fast pathway and this is the slow pathway. As the name suggests, fast pathway means impulse can travel faster in this pathway. But fast pathway has a longer refractory period. Refractory period means uh, the period during which this fast pathway cannot be excited with any more impulse. Okay. The other one I said slow pathway. As the name suggests, slow pathway means the impulse can travel slowly in this pathway. But slow pathway has a short refractory period. Okay, so what we have to remember that in the AV node, there are two pathways. One is fast pathway and the other one is slow pathway. In the fast pathway, impulses can travel faster, but it has a longer refractory period. Whereas slow pathway has a short refractory period, okay, short RP. Now, when normally an impulse travels up to the AV node, okay, it will uh, run in the fast pathway, okay. And then ultimately it will uh, reach the common pathway and then it will go down and excite the ventricle. The impulse also will travel through the slow pathway. Okay, But since the pathway is slow, it will travel slowly. And by the time it reaches here, the fast pathway will be in its refractory period. Since fast pathway has a longer refractory period, it takes longer time to recover. So once the tra uh, impulse has traveled through the fast pathway, it will become the pathway will become refractory. Okay. So the impulse which travels through the slow pathway at the time when it reaches here, it will find the fast pathway in its refractory period. So the impulse will get cut down here. Okay. This is what is happening normally. Now let's see what happens in case of AV and RT. Okay. Uh, let's suppose there is a premature impulse uh, or premature beat in the atria. When the premature beat reaches the AV node, okay, uh, it will find a fast pathway in its refractory period. Why so? Because the normal impulse has already traveled through the fast pathway before the premature impulse. And now the fast pathway in it is in it a refractory period. And it takes a longer time to become activated again. In that case, the impulse which reaches here will start traveling through the slow pathway. Okay, this is a slow pathway. And by the time it reaches here, okay, the fast pathway will have recovered by now, okay. So, by the time impulses traveling through the slow pathway reaches here, the fast pathway must have recovered from its refractory period. So, now this impulse can travel back 
upwards towards the fast pathway okay and this uh this cycle keeps going on like this okay so it creates a loop okay the impulse will travel in this loop and it will keep on exciting the ventricles at a much higher rate than the normal impulse okay heart rate in avnrt will be around 150 to 250 per minute okay uh, i hope it is clear um, i'll explain once again if there is a premature beat and the premature beat reaches the av node then it will find the fast pathway okay here is the fast pathway fast pathway in its refractory period because it will be in the refractory period after the previous normal impulse has passed through the has passed through the fast pathway so the impulse the premature impulse now has only one way to go that is slow pathway okay so it will start traveling through the slow pathway and by the time the impulse reaches up to here okay reaches up to this level the fast pathway will have recovered by now so the impulse is going to travel back into the fast pathway so it goes upwards and some of the impulses will go uh, back to the atria also so it will cause retrograde activation of the atria okay and it will keep circling in a loop loop like this that is why the name reentrant tachycardia has been given and this reentrant tachycardia will excite the ventricle at a much higher rate okay so heart rate will be around 150 to 250 minute per minute okay now AVNRT has two types one is typical AVNRT where the impulse travels down through the slow pathway and then it runs upwards through the fast pathway so that is slow fast AVNRT which just now i have discussed almost around 90% of the AVNRT is of this variety there is one more variety that is atypical AVNRT in atypical AVNRT the impulse travels downwards through the fast pathway and then it goes back upwards through the slow pathway that is fast slow avnrt and almost around 10% of the avnrts are of this variety atypical variety now if we talk about ecg what will be the findings of avnrt okay as i have said heart rate will be much higher okay we call tachycardia when the heart rate is more than 100 so in avnrt it will be almost in between 150 to 200 okay oh uh, sorry 150 to 250 now what will be the ecg patterns this is probably the commonest ecg pattern in avnrt in this ecg pattern we can only see the qrs complexes we cannot see any p wave because the p waves are uh, buried inside the qrs complex so without p wave there is uh, tachycardia with regular heart rate that is the typical presentation ecg presentation of av and rt and in this pattern we can see uh, there is something which is uh, looking like an s wave okay this is known as pseudo s wave okay because this is actually the p wave okay this is the retrograde p wave which is coming after the qr just after the qr is complex so it is giving an appearance of like s wave okay so this is pseudo s wave in the next pattern we can see there is something which is looking like a q wave okay but this is pseudo q wave because this is not exact actual q wave rather this is the retrograde or inverted p wave which is coming just before the qrs complexes okay most of the time we will see pseudo s wave okay but in some uh, rare cases we can find pseudo q wave also this is about typical okay this is about typical av nrt 
in a typical avian rt the picture will be somewhat like this in this we will be able to see a distinct p wave retrogradely converted uh, retrogradely transported p wave okay inverted p wave which is coming uh, distinctly before the qrs complexes okay so this type of uh, pattern we can see in case of atypical av nrt and how uh, not only from the ecg from the clinical features also we should uh, suspect about av nrt the patient will present with palpitation okay Usually, it is seen in case of young female. So, uh, the female uh, patient may present with palpitation or sweating or increased micturition also. Okay. So, once we diagnose the case, we should definitely be able to manage a case of AVNRT. Thank you so much for listening.